When we talk about leadership, we usually say leadership is about change. And sometimes we say leadership is about transformation. Why is this? Why is leadership and transformation and change related together? Let's go to the fundamentals, to the ultimate purpose. What really matters is one thing, is that you survive and grow, that your family survives and grows, that your team, your department, your organization, your country survives and grows. That's what matters. So forget about leadership, forget about transformation. That's what you need to do. Just focus on staying alive as much as you can and maximize your experience of being alive. Now, how do you do that? We live in a dynamic context. Everything in a state of motion. The whole universe has been expanding for the past 13, 14 billion years. The Earth, the solar system, everything is in motion. All the time. You are in a state of motion because you're growing every second. So we live in a dynamic environment. We don't live in a static environment. Therefore, change is at the core of survival. Because what does survival mean? Survival means how to stay alive in an environment that's continuously changing. Now, the process of staying in harmony, staying alive with an environment that's continuously changing, it's called adaptation. What's at the core of adaptation is change. So adaptation is change that is required so that you're always in tune and in harmony with a dynamically changing environment around you. Because the moment there is a mismatch between you and your environment, one of these two elements have to pay the price. Usually it's you because the environment is always stronger, at least when we talk about social systems and the, you know, nature um, and something at that scale. So change is necessary for adaptation and adaptation is necessary for survival so that you stay alive. You want to take it further so that not just you stay alive, so that you make the best out of the changes around you and you grow and you expand and you prosper and you live in abundance and you save and you live a better life and you elevate your state of being, you elevate your experience of, of being alive. Now, sometimes changes in environment around you are dramatic. They're not gradual. They're not small pieces, they're dramatic. Dramatic change in the ecosystem. The, the economy collapses. There's an earthquake, there's a tsunami, there's a war around you in the region. The stock market collapses. The political structure of the country uh, goes through a shock. The government fails, the president dies, something happened. When this happens, the amount of change that is required to stay in harmony with your new reality is big amount, is a huge amount compared to the relatively small change that usually happens, you know, as by default. Now, a huge amount of change is called transformation. What does the word transformation mean? It's two parts. Transform. So the form, your form, has went into a state of trans. So it's not in this as it used to be before. It made a big leap in one direction or another. I'll give another example. You know somebody, you, you haven't seen somebody for a long time. You see the same person, that person could be one of different situations. Either the same, haven't, hasn't lost weight, weight, so it's the same. Or minor changes, just minor changes, added or lost some weight. 
or you see this person who is a complete state of shock that person either has lost major weight or has gained major weight now when this major thing happened that's a transformation when you refer to that to what has just happened with your friend you don't refer to it as a minor change you see this person is you've completely transformed you say you've lost so much weight or you've added so much weight hmm? so transformation is a significant amount of change now survival and growth requires that you do the necessary when the changes are minor and gradual smooth in your environment you go through change through adaptation and when the changes are significant to stay in fit with your environment you go through the process of transformation which is a major change why for the same purpose you stay alive and if you can grow now this process is not an easy process because it involves loss and it involves pain it involves leaving an old reality and embracing you know becoming acquainted adapting getting to know getting used to a new reality this is not an easy journey because we are creatures of habit when we have a ha when we have habits usually and we all do we stick to these habits and we get attached to them we also creatures of beliefs when we have beliefs and world views and values and we've held we've held these for a long time we become attached to them now leaving something that's that you've been attached to is not easy it's not easy at all and some people might even fail to do it without assistance now where does leadership comes come leadership comes to where you need to mobilize these people so that if they do the hard work of change that involves loss involves creating a new reality involves letting go of bad habits acquiring new habits letting go of old beliefs that don't fit anymore acquiring new beliefs or going through transformation that involves a major reformation you know you didn't just change the furniture in your house you've changed everything you've repainted the house you've changed the structure of the room you've reorganized the entire place that's not changed that's a transformation you move the kitchen from one place to another you've divided uh, the living room into different you know bedrooms that's a transformational change so that process needs help and the process of helping the task and the mission of helping people go through the journey of change and transformation that's necessary just to stay alive and to grow is called leadership now when you do the same to you when you need to mobilize yourself so that you as a person go through the process of change or transformation that is required for your sake so that you stay alive and you prosper and grow in a changing environment that's called self-leadership in some cases it requires change because the changes around you has been mild and smooth so you change and that's called adaptation and in some cases it requires a major transformation of mindset of values of way of looking at the world of way of living of lifestyle of thinking of behaving of working of uh, building relationships of interacting of eating of you know taking care of yourself right of you know, uh, exercising habits that also that is what we call process of self-leadership The nature of the challenge determines the complexity that's required when you're exercising leadership. Determines the level of skills that are required so that you can exercise leadership successfully. Listen carefully. When you're exercising self-leadership, who are you guiding or leading through the process of change and transformation? Yourself. Yourself. Remember, you are with yourself all the time. You're thinking about yourself most of the time. You know yourself the most. And even though 
that's the case, it's still hard. People find it difficult to change, you know, one habit, smoking habit. Just you name it. Because we're creatures of habit and we get attached and there is an evolutionary reason why do we get attached and become you know, develop habits. It's a good reason. So even when self-leadership is, you know, applied, it's hard. Now, imagine how harder it is to mobilize other people, other people to go through the process of change and transformation so that they survive and grow and they make their life better or they overcome problems. Imagine how hard it is when what? When the people whom you're trying to mobilize are the main part of the reason of the mess that they are in. Just getting them to accept that they are part of the problem, which is usually the case, that alone is a big challenge because they will go into defense mechanisms, denial, you know, you blame, uh, victim mentality, pointing fingers somewhere else, avoidance of responsibility, just you name it. You name the techniques and there are like uh, hundreds of them maybe, right? Just to get to relieve themselves from the pressure of having to admit that they are sources of the problems or at least part of the problems, part of the source of their problems and that they have to change. Okay, now, the bigger the number of people, the bigger the problem. Why? Because there are more people involved. You've just added more elements. And if so and so and so are fine and they're going along with you, other people may not go along with you. So it becomes far more complicated and complex. Now think about a country. Five million people country. Can you imagine how hard it is to lead 5 million people through a process of change and transformation? Now imagine China and India, when you're talking billion plus. It's very hard. It's super hard. As I said, how do you know that? Just imagine how hard it is to change yourself. Imagine how hard it is. and. Now you laugh about this. To change your spouse, your husband or your wife. Try to change your kids. Especially after they're grown up. After they've grown up, try to change them if you can. Try to change your siblings. Try to change your parents if you can. Even if you have the best intention and in your mind you're exercising leadership and it's all for their sake. It is so hard. That's why it's so rare. Yet it is so absolutely necessary because without this process, without change, without transformation, without adaptation, there is no survival. There is no growth. We are doomed. Society is doomed. Families are doomed. Organizations are doomed without this. So it's absolutely necessary part of our journey of survival and growth that somebody exercises leadership. Somebody mobilizes people so they understand why it's important for them to change your family, yourself, your team, your department, your company, your country. Somebody has to do that. Somebody has to be strong enough to deal with all the resistance and the complexity and the problems that will come out of asking people to change their reality and abandon their comfort zone, abandon their previous reality, even if it was difficult, but because they are used to it. Because they hate change, they hate loss, they hate the pain that comes with loss. Now, let's make it more complex. Imagine if the challenge itself is a big challenge. So the journey of lead of change and transformation has come to be a dramatic journey. Something big has happened. Major earthquake, major recession, major depression, war, economic collapse, you know, you lost somebody in the family, the company went bankrupt, your, you know, your factory went on fire, right? Something major happened. The challenge there is much more stronger. It's much more strong, right? So the difficulty of the task is much bigger. 
But at the same time, the need for leadership is higher. And in the absence of that need, what happens? In the absence of that leadership, what happens? Disaster happens. Disaster happens. If your family is going through tough times and nobody is there to hold the family together and be the strongest person in that family so that the family can you know get through this difficult journey into the other side of this journey you know into some harmony peace of mind into a new reality with minimum damage then what happens then the family will continue to live in that drama and guess what it will become worse and worse and worse and worse and then the drama will eat everybody in that family the same thing to your department the same thing to your organization the same thing in your country problems over time become worse very few problems if you're lucky get solved over time it's said that time solves problems some cases time doesn't solve time doesn't solve cancer time doesn't solve aging Time doesn't solve diseases. So time is not on your, always on your side. That's why leadership is needed. That's why leadership is absolutely important. It's not, leadership is not a luxury. Why? Because change and transformation are not luxury. Why? Because your game is clear. You either survive or you die. And why is that the name of the game? Because it's changing. Life is changing around you. You have to adapt. Winter will come. You have to wear different kind of clothes. Or you'll become sick. Then summer will come. There will be a change. Then you also have to change your clothes. Otherwise you will suffocate. That's why it's not an option. That's why it's hard. That's why it's a necessity. That's why it's rare. But that's why... It's one of the most honorable thing you can do to yourself and to people around you because what you're really doing is is you're keeping them in the game is you're protecting their life and in some cases also you're in this short span of time that they have that we called life you're making them enjoy life you're making it more abundance more abundant more you know, worth living, more harmonious, and with more moments of happiness, more dignity, less pain and mess. And that's as honorable as it can get. The best time to change is when you have to change. I tell you why. Because change consumes so much energy. Change is, can be stressful. Change involves losses. Change involves sometimes pain. Change involves uncertainty. Change involves sometimes conflict. Change involves you have to redesign things. Change involves uncertainty. So do you have to change? Yes, you have to change. When do you have to change? Do you have to change? Yes, you have to change. When do you have to change? When your environment sends you signal that there's no miss and match anymore. You're not well tuned with your environment, with your ecosystem. So of course you have to change. Now, however, I said change when you have to change. But to change intelligently, to change effectively, to change in a smart way you have to keep your eyes open all the time so that you can monitor the way your environment is changing your market is changing your surrounding is, change, is changing so even yourself is changing you, you are changing so even when things are going beautifully well harmony productivity smooth things are going you know as well as they can be right even when that happens you enjoy the moment and you live it 
because that's what you have to do but you keep your eyes open and you keep monitoring the change and you keeping preparing you keep preparing your readiness your readiness so that you do the change when you have to do that how do you do that by being conscious all the time by watching your surrounding by understanding yourself by understanding others and observing them by understanding the system around you and observing it by keeping an open mind to learning new skills that you expect that you might need in the future as you see things are happening I'll give you an example you see a clouds coming and they're going to be you think they're going to be a storm there's a storm on the way what do you do do you wait until it happens you know if you're in a picnic you don't have to interrupt your picnic right and mess up everything you mess up your day and you know go home especially if the storm might, might you know might take two or three days to come so you enjoy your picnic of course but you keep in mind that something is changing and you have to be prepared so when your picnic is done and you go home you start taking the measures that are necessary so that you face the change that is that is going to happen right so you live the moment you watch the environment around you you observe you analyze you learn you adapt you acquire new skills and you get ready so that when change happens you do what you have to do